let's get started. Um, hi, uh, I'm Robert Foss. Uh, I work for Collabra, as you may have guessed. And um, my name is actually Foss. It's not some sort of an alias. Uh, it's, it's my mother's name as well, and she does not do any kind of software, really. Um, so uh, working for Collabra means that I work on open source for a living. I mostly do uh, Linux graphics work. And uh, this is what we're going to talk about today, uh, the embedded uh, GPU ecosystem and how it's doing and what's going on. Uh, so uh, specifically, we're going to cover the history, uh, what the open source support is for most of the vendors. And we're also going to cover what comes next and uh, the bigger picture of what the industry looks like and uh, how open source drivers seem to come about. Uh, so we're not going to talk about uh, the GPU you're making in your garage. Uh, we're not going to talk about very old uh, architectures uh, like the uh, uh, VIA Chrome GPU, for example, that uh, uh, Kevin Brace bravely is working on. And the emphasis is also going to be on the embedded ecosystem uh, because it's what's interesting to us. Uh, so let's start off with the history. Uh, uh, this is Intel. Uh, they've contributed for a very long time. They've been a very good citizen for a very long time. Their current driver, the i915 driver, uh, was first uh, merged in 2004. Uh, and uh, they've been very active in supporting it since then. Um, it's, they support OpenGL 4.5, Vulkan 1.1, on all the applicable hardware anyway. Uh, so if uh, there's a gold standard, I think Intel is it. Uh, there's also MD, which has been around for quite a while in the open source space anyway. Um, and they're also a good, dis a good citizen. They've uh, contributed a lot, especially recently. Uh, but they've been uh, very open towards the community since at least 2009, where they released uh, the documentation for the, their then current uh, high-end GPUs. And uh, they also support uh, OpenGL 4.5 and Vulkan 1.1, which uh, almost is as, as current as it gets. There's OpenGL 4.6, but uh, let's ignore that. No one supports it at the moment, not in the open source space anyway. Uh, and then there's NVIDIA, which is uh, very interesting. Uh, the Novo driver has been around since uh, 2010. Uh, so that's a relatively long history. Uh, it supports OpenGL 4.5, so uh, it has very good support. Uh, but NVIDIA itself has never really backed it. Uh, they have on occasion backed it, but not like through and through. So uh, uh, they could be a better citizen. I, I'm, I'm saying that, and uh, there uh, are very specific things they could be doing, which, which would be very simple for them, like uh, releasing uh, the, the firmware for their GPUs so that uh, an open source driver could just load it and run it on, on, in the same way that the proprietary, proprietary one does. Um, something interesting, though, about NVIDIA and their support is the support for their uh, Tegra uh, platforms, which uh, was partly sponsored by an aircraft uh, supplier. Uh, so they upstreamed uh, um, I think the initial support for the Tegra platform, uh, and that's something we'll get back to. Um, there's also Qualcomm, which has uh, an even shorter uh, history in the op open source space. Uh, and as you may be noticing, we're going through this in a sort of vaguely chronological order. Uh, and uh, Qualcomm has become a, is becoming a rather good citizen in the sense that uh, they're contributing code through the Code Aurora project. They didn't start the driver. They didn't start uh, the initial development. That was Rob Clark, uh, mostly by himself, I think. Um, yeah, and uh, their current driver supports um, all of their hardware, which is rather good. That's more than we can say for, for most vendors. Uh, and interestingly, uh, there's a fun fact about the, uh, the Qualcomm Adreno drivers. It's, uh, it was bought by, or from AMD. The uh, Qualcomm bought the uh, uh, AMD mobile handset division in 2009, I believe. And Adreno is a wordplay on Radeon. So 
it's hidden in plain sight, if you will. Uh, there's also Broadcom, which uh, has been a very good citizen, but since very, very recently. Uh, they hired uh, Eric Anholt in 2015, I believe, who has since been going on a solo mission to uh, provide very good support for the VC4 platform. Um, and the VC4 platform has very good support now. And there's more newer, higher-end higher hardware coming along, the VC5, which uh, has partial support. But it's not re really even available to the public in dev kits anymore, or already. So uh, we're kind of ahead of us ourselves. Uh, there's also uh, Vivante and the Etnaviv driver, which is fairly recent. It's from uh, 2015 uh, in Mesa, or maybe the kernel. Uh, the first patches were accepted. Uh, reverse engineering of it has been going on since about 2012. And more recently, in the past few years, uh, reverse engineering and development has been sponsored by uh, another aircraft supplier, which is very interesting. I'm, I'm seeing a trend here. Apparently, aircraft suppliers care a lot about open source, uh, <laughs> which was very surprising to me. Um, and uh, support for, for their hardware is now very good. They're also coming out with newer, newer fancier hardware, which has initial support but uh, it seems to be uh, working out quite well, that too. Uh, and then there's Imagination. Uh, Imagination is interesting in that they have some patches and some support floating around for uh, their hardware, for, for, their, uh, for the kernel, uh, for Mesa, but none of these patches are acceptable to the upstream community. And that's mostly due to the fact that their patches are very partial, like they support a very slim use case or a slim set of use cases for their hardware. So they can't be accepted due to not offering full, like, broad support. So there's, for example, uh, a kernel, uh, there's, for example, a kernel driver for the power GPUs. Um, and it's unacceptable due to there being no user space user of them or it. So Mesa has no support for it. Uh, there's also some Mesa patches floating around for it, but the, it's very limited to non-3D operations, so it's not interesting to like the wider public, maybe in some special use cases. Um, and then there's ARM, which is fully unsupported. They have never contributed anything, as far as I know, and not to the GPUs anyway. Um, they uh, uh, kind of uh, bet very heavy on OpenCL for their previous generation of GPUs, which was interesting, the Mali T something somethings. Uh, but they wanted to sell the OpenCL support. So I think that uh, that's descriptive of their perspective on open source. They would like to have uh, their driver be a paid service, so they would like to make some money off of it, which is fair, but uh, uh, not really congruent with the uh, values of the open source community. Uh, yeah, so uh, with uh, the broad hand wavy history out of the way, here's the open source support today, uh, what it looks like. Uh, for practical reasons, I'm not going to have a look at anything before 2009, and <laughs> the practical reasons is that uh, my diagrams would be like very wide, and I wouldn't be able to fit stuff in them, so uh, yeah, that's why. So 10 years is plenty. Uh, let's have a look at NVIDIA uh, first. And this is what the uh, reverse engineering process looked like. This is specifically looking at a reverse engineering tool called NVTools. And um, around 2010, early 2010, uh, the first support for the current modern day uh, NVIDIA GPUs was uh, merged. Uh, that's Fermi for, uh, uh, let's see, it's also known as the NVC Zero. But uh, uh, since then, uh, there's been a steady pace of, of uh, support added for, for the NVIDIA GPUs. And the support comes in the form of like adding uh, like uh, register definitions so that you can see what the, the proprietary driver is actually doing when it's talking to the GPU, so you can decode it in a reasonable fashion. Um, so about every two years, there seems to be a new GPU added. Uh, and uh, let's see. Oops, sorry, that was the wrong way. 
And this is what the, the reverse, reverse engineering work ends up uh, looking like when it's actually producing a driver. So you can see that uh, there's a little bit of a delay, generally speaking, from the, the reverse engineering effort. Uh, I think that's maybe six months from the first Fermi support to the later Fermi support in, in Mesa. And uh, uh, there's also a corresponding graph for, uh, for the kernel when stuff is merged, but it basically says the same thing, so it's not very interesting. So I just opted for the Mesa one. Uh, so uh, Pascal is their latest GPU. So uh, the open source support goes all the way uh, to current day, uh, to whatever you can buy in stores today, which is nice. Um, if we continue with Intel, uh, there's no reverse engineering timeline. Uh, although uh, there has been, uh, I've heard rumors floating around that internally Intel actually does some reverse engineering, or the Linux team does some, re some reverse engineering of their Windows driver to uh, get better documentation. Uh, so that's kind of interesting, I guess. Uh, the, this timeline is very much cut, cut short. It's of the uh, i915 driver. Uh, it itself was merged in 2004. Uh, so yeah, we're missing a fair bit of uh, time. Uh, so in, two in 2004, um, a company called Tungsten uh, wrote the initial open source driver for the i915 platform. And uh, since then, uh, Intel has been actively contributing towards it, uh, and still is, very much so. Uh, so if we look at the Gen 10 uh, hardware, that's hardware that isn't even released yet. So uh, when you actually get a hold of that hardware, you'll probably be pretty pleasantly surprised about the level of support. It'll work out of the box, hopefully pretty well. Um, so let's uh, look at AMD. Uh, there's no reverse engineering timeline here either. I could probably dig one up, but since uh, their, uh, their entry into the open source community with the R600 GPU, uh, they have been providing uh, documentation. Uh, so little reverse engineering efforts have been required, or at least fewer than normal, which is very nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, it has, I think helped the community greatly. So this is what their uh, uh, timeline looks like. The R600 around, let's see, 2010 was merged into Mesa. Um, and the Vega 10 uh, is the latest hardware that's available. So it covers uh, basically the entire recent span. Uh, something interesting about AMD specifically is that they have a lot of drivers, like a lot, lot. Uh, on the kernel side, they have two drivers. They have the, the Radeon driver and also the AMD GPU driver. So that's two. Uh, on the Mesa side, they have three drivers. They have the R600 for that very early generation of uh, drivers. There's the Radeon. Uh, the Radeon driver covers a span like uh, from the Evergreen to uh, Southern Islands, I believe. And then there's the Radeon SI which covers uh, sea islands and, and to today. Uh, so that's the stuff that lives in Mesa. But then there's more. Then there's drivers uh, uh, that don't live in Mesa. Uh, specifically, there's the AMD Vulkan driver, which is open source and available to anyone, but it's not really hosted within the, the normal, like everyday um, projects like Mesa. Um, so it's living somewhere else, I think, on, on GitHub. So if you're interested, you can have a look. Uh, and uh, then we have uh, Broadcom, which is interesting. Uh, they have uh, no reverse engineering chart because much of the development has happened uh, in-house uh, by uh, Broadcom, and specifically Eric Anholt. He's, he's uh, the, the one guy dev team <laughs> inside of Broadcom doing all of this stuff. And, uh, uh, his work has, has resulted in very good support for the uh, uh, VC4 platform. So uh, if we have a look at the graph, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty empty. There's not a lot of hardware in there, but the VC4 uh, hardware has been supported for, for a good while, and it's still being actively developed on. And uh, coming down the pipeline, there's also the VC5. Uh, and the VC5 is, uh, isn't really available quite yet. Um, 
So uh, it not being uh, totally ready yet doesn't ma matter. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, if you look at the dev kits you can get a hold of for this stuff, I would recommend maybe a Raspberry Pi 3. They're cheap, fast, available, and uh, would let you try out the VC4 stuff. Uh, and then there's the VC5 hardware. Uh, there's an SOC number. Uh, I don't think it's available anywhere, so uh, who knows? Maybe it'll be in the Raspberry Pi 4. I have no idea, uh, but maybe. Uh, continuing on, there's Qualcomm. Uh, and this is what their reverse engineering uh, chart looks like. So it started, uh, uh, yeah, like a few years ago with the A200, A300. They were added basically simultaneously. Um, the A200 and 300 hardware was uh, very much available at the time, or both were available at the time of the first reverse engineering, so they were added pretty much simultaneously. Um, and this hardware is what you'll find probably in your Android phone, most likely. Uh, and. Uh, it also covers the entire span of available hardware from, from Qualcomm. The A500, I believe, is the very latest hardware you can get a hold of. So it is well supported. And much of this work has been done by uh, Rob Clark. Uh, yeah. And this is what uh, the support in Mesa looks like. So it's almost uh, like same day, at least for, for some of the hardware targets. The, uh, the A500, the most recent hardware, was uh, reverse engineered a little bit, for, uh, a little bit before the, uh, the actual support was added to Mesa. Uh, but it's, it's all in there, and it's in good order too. Like the, the driver is very mature, so that's nice. And if you wanna have a look at the hardware and develop it for yourself perhaps, or develop the drivers for yourself, uh, this is uh, the uh, first or the most reasonable uh, A200 uh, development kit I could find. Uh, it's the NXP IMX53. Uh, it should be pretty cheap by now. It's uh, somewhat old. It's uh, three generations old, I think. Um, if you want to have a look at the more uh, um, something more reasonable, there's the Dragon Board 410C, which is a, a pretty current uh, dev board. Uh, I use it every now and then. Uh, and it's based on the, the Qualcomm 410e SoC. Uh, and if you want to look at the A3 uh, or A400, uh, there's the Enforce uh, board here. It has an, uh, a Qualcomm uh, 805 SoC. Uh, and lastly, there's the most recent board. I'm not even sure how available this is, but I think it's starting to trickle out of Qualcomm now. Uh, there's the Dragon Board A10C which is based on the 820, or sorry, the Dragon Board A20C, uh, which is based on the A20E SOC. Um, e standing for embedded, I would presume. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, support for this uh, is pretty OK, I believe. Um, there may be some kernel stuff that's still being worked on, but uh, uh, it should be usable for most use cases. Um, so uh, that brings us to Vivante, which I've been sort of uh, working with a, a fair amount recently, which uh, it's pretty interesting the way it was developed. Um, so the reverse engineering work has been, I think it started 2012. Um, and the Vivante GPUs are very common, like they're very low priced, so you'll find them in pretty much anything that's cheap. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is what the uh, reverse engineering effort actually uh, ended up in. Um, so the driver was introduced 2017, uh, uh, 16, yeah, uh, and uh, was done in, in large parts by uh, um, Vladimir van der Laan. He did much of the reverse engineering. Christian Geminer also did. Uh, Lucas Stack. Uh, Pengatronics also did. And the support for these, this hardware, um, this, I think the entire span is the GC200 to the GC3000, is very mature. It's pretty good. And then lastly, there's the GC7000, which uh, just has the initial support added now. And you can sort of maybe get a hold of a dev board. Maybe not. It's a little bit early days for it. Uh, 
So if you want to develop stuff for the GC3 uh, 2000, there's the IMX Sabre boards or IMX 6 Sabre boards. Uh, for the 3000, there's the IMX 6 uh, QP Sabre boards. Uh, the QP is basically a, just a, a higher end version of the, uh, uh, the normal IMX 6 with a little bit fancier hardware. Um, and uh, then there's this dev, dev board, which is barely available. I don't think I could get a hold of one if I wanted to. So uh, uh, hopefully it'll be easier to get a hold of. But uh, the developers of the Vivante or Etnaviv driver um, have some hardware. So development is, is proceeding. Uh, so everything is good in that respect. Uh, so let's have a look at, at ARM. There's actually something to say about ARM, which is pretty pleasant. Uh, some stuff is happening. Um, the uh, Mali T uh, series of GPUs just drew its very first triangles. Uh, maybe, uh, I think it was like a month ago, which is very recent. And also there's, a more, there's more of a continuous ongoing uh, reverse engineering of, uh, effort for the Mali G series of GPUs. Um, there's not much of a driver and uh, none of it has been uh, upstreamed, so you won't find any support for this in either the kernel or the Mesa. So it's all based on, on like tooling. So it's still the very early days for uh, uh, ARM support. Uh, but if you want to have a look at this stuff, here's a dev board that you could use. Uh, it has the RK, uh, Rockship RK3288 SOC. Um, I think it's like 70 bucks or something, something like that. It's not too bad. Uh, and if you want to look at the more recent uh, G series of GPUs, uh, there's the uh, high key 960 board, which is being used for development of all kinds of things, actually. It's pretty interesting. Uh, and support for it is, is uh, pretty good upstream, I believe. Uh, yeah, so that brings us to uh, imagination. And uh, I don't have a lot to say about imagination. There's not a lot of support. There's not really any reverse engineering uh, going on. And uh, they don't seem to be uh, too interested in actually contributing towards uh, the stuff. So uh, uh, I don't have any dev kits to recommend. I don't know. Uh, if you feel very brave, you can look this stuff up and, uh, and see uh, if there's anything that seems like uh, uh, yeah, low-hanging fruit to you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that brings us to what comes next. So if this is where we are now and where we've been before, uh, we're also going places. And uh, OpenGL support uh, is being continuously improved. OpenGL 4.6 isn't really supported by any of the open source drivers quite yet. So most of the drivers with good support are at 4.5. Um, so there are a few features still missing. Um, there's also OpenCL support, um, or rather there isn't any. Uh, not in the uh, normal uh, uh, open source ecosystem anyway. Uh, there's the Intel Neon uh, support uh, for the Intel GPUs. Uh, so this doesn't live in Mesa, it lives somewhere else. Oh, on GitHub, I would presume, or in Intel open source, oh, 1.0.org. Um, and I think it support, supports the uh, latest OpenCL standards, which is very nice. Uh, it's not a, uh, an easy target to meet, but they've done it. There's also the AMD Rockem, which doesn't live inside of Mesa or any of the traditional repositories either, uh, but uh, supplies us with a pretty decent uh, open source support for OpenCL. Uh, but for the, the community-only drivers, this uh, support is very poor. There is none, basically. So if you wanted to uh, run OpenCL on your Qualcomm Adreno GPU, you'd be out of luck, basically. Uh, there's no such support today. Uh, but there is support coming along for the NVIDIA uh, driver, the, the Nouveau driver. Um, there's also support coming along for the Freedreno uh, Qualcomm driver. Um, so uh, what this looks like today is that there is um, a need for an, uh, an uh, OpenCL compiler or front end. And uh, there is LLVM, um, and it supports OpenCL to some extent. Uh, however, uh, in order to use it in the context of a driver, we needed it to emit something uh, that is uh, parsable by our drivers. Uh, so 
Uh, we need LLVM to emit SpearV, uh, which is an, a compiler intermediate format. Uh, SpearV is, isn't natively supported by uh, uh, the open source drivers, but you can convert SpearV to something that is supported by some of the drivers. Uh, there's more work to be done in that space too, for sure. Um, so most of the, uh, uh, the current day open source drivers are uh, using a format called TGSI. Um, and TGSI is not very easy to convert uh, SpurV into. However, there's an alternative. There's uh, a format called NIR, uh, which is a bit more modern than TGSI. Uh, TGSI was introduced, I believe, with the uh, uh, I915 driver uh, in 2004. Uh, it stands for tungsten something intermediate, I would presume. I don't actually know. Uh, but it's, uh, it's very old. It's been around for, for a long time. So uh, it's well supported, but it's not well suited for the purpose. It's, for example, not SSA based, which is what you really want your in intermediate formats to be, uh, at least for modern day compilers. Uh, so the idea is to move uh, the open source drivers to support uh, NIR, which would make it very easy or relatively easy to uh, ingest SpearV into the driver. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that concludes the OpenCL support. Uh, Collabora is also working on this uh, in terms of uh, making LLVM support emitting SpearV better. Um, the, there, are, uh, there is a branch of LLVM for this. Um, but it's not upstreamed into the main mainline LLVM, which is what we want and what we need in order to support this stuff. Uh, there's also Vulkan support. Um, most, uh, most vendors don't have Vulkan support. Uh, uh, AMD does. They have uh, lots of support, in fact. They have uh, RADV, which, is, uh, which, which lives in Mesa, which is uh, like the community driver. Uh, and there's also AMD Vulkan, which is the corporate driver. Both are open source and available, of course. And uh, I believe both support uh, Vulkan 1.1. At least RADV does. AMD Vulkan may not, but uh, it should be soon anyway. Uh, and for Intel, there's the ANV uh, driver. And it supports uh, Vulkan 1.1 uh, and also lives in, in, uh, inside of Mesa. So it's as community oriented as it gets. So uh, that concludes the Vulkan support stuff. Uh, the big picture, this is the interesting part to me. Uh, if we look at the, uh, the development perspective of, of the big picture, there are, thing, there are a few uh, conclusions we can draw. For example, some drivers are very mature. Um, the uh, Intel ones, the AMD ones, the Qualcomm ones, they're doing very well and they're very reasonable to use in a production device. Uh, and if you find any bugs, you know, just report them and someone will actually attend to them. Uh, so that's very nice to see. Uh, there's also um, lots of, uh, lots of uh, supported, uh, uh, there, there are lots of vendor supported drivers that uh, don't live inside of the, the, the usual repositories. Specifically, AMD seems to be guilty of doing this, uh, which is, uh, certainly okay, but maybe not ideal, uh, especially not in the sense that if they use the same, uh, if AMD used the same code paths as uh, the other drivers did, there would be a lot to gain for the other drivers, but also less work for AMD. But presumably, they see uh, the value of, of having the same code base uh, run on multiple operating system as a, as a bigger net gain for them. Um, yeah, and then there's this. This is pretty cool. Just looking at the graphs or the timelines I had, uh, there seems to be about between zero and three years seems to be the, uh, the time it takes to reverse, from reverse engineering something to the, the day that you actually include the first uh, support for, uh, for a device uh, in the kernel or in Mesa. Um, so if we look at the, uh, the ARM uh, reverse engineering, which started relatively recently, um, that happened basically now. If we're very lucky, maybe we'll have some drivers in three years, maybe. It would be nice. Um, and uh, yeah, this is sort of reiterating what I already covered. 
vendors support API, APIs outside of the usual repos. So uh, that's what AMD does to a large extent. Uh, also, OpenCL is hard. <laughs> There's lots of work that needs to be done, and the ecosystem for, it, for doing it in, in the open source is, is not very mature. Like, lots of uh, tooling is needed, and lots of the very basic infrastructure is just lacking. Um, for example, yeah, the, the compiler infrastructure with uh, Spear V not being really in place. Um, and there's the, the vendor aspect to the big picture. Um, some vendor support is really awesome. Like some vendors are really, really good. Um, and some are not so good. And open source drivers come in a few different shapes and the way they're structured. Uh, there are the ones with vendor support and those that don't. For example, the Vivante driver has no vendor support, yet the driver is pretty damn good. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, there are small vendors. Uh, for example, uh, Broadcom has the one-man Eric team, uh, which is uh, doing really awesome work. And there are big teams like the, the Intel team or the AMD team. Uh, some vendors uh, are more motivated to control their, uh, uh, their software stack. Uh, that would be maybe um, the ARMS, the uh, Imagination, the NVIDIA. They are more motivated to, uh, uh, to own uh, the software than they are to contribute to the open source. Uh, and then there's the NVIDIA, which is just plain weird. Uh, they have a, a great driver, but they're not allowing us to really use their GPUs to the full ex fullest extent by uh, not publishing uh, the firmware that is needed to actually have them work. Yeah. Uh, and if, if we have a look at the manufacturers, here's some interesting stuff too. Uh, some, industries, some industries really need open source. Um, and uh, apparently, that's, that's the aircraft industry. Uh, they care in the sense that they have to, they really have to support a device for 20 years. They can't half-ass it. They can't do what the Android, uh, um, uh, Android uh, uh, product manufacturers are doing, where they sort of release a device and it's supported to some extent for a year to three years maybe. Uh, but their devices are installed and they're going to be the aircraft devices are installed and they're going to be used for 20 years. And if, uh, if a plane ever goes down because of a faulty driver, uh, that would be pretty unacceptable. So uh, they actually care about the open source support in, in a very real way. Um, so um, anyone who really cares about having good long-term um, support for their drivers uh, should have a serious look into the open source drivers. It's one of those huge things that isn't maybe obvious. If you do run a proprietary driver, how are you ever going to move to a new kernel in five years? <coughs> Probably aren't, or maybe you are, but your vendor will tell you to give them a bunch of money to do uh, work. Uh, uh, it's hard to gar make guarantees about uh, using hardware that is unsupported or poorly supported so it's hard to deliver products. Uh, yeah, and that's it for me. That's all of the conclusions. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Uh, in your opinion, do you have a, a chip manufacturer in mind that is doing the best in terms of open source software development? There are some that are really good, um, like um, Intel, AMD are doing really well. Uh, uh, Qualcomm seems to be doing, uh, or they seem to start caring, uh, which is very nice. Like they're actually contributing support for for new GPUs, and there are some that are too small or unmotivated or some combination of that. And is there um, like any development boards that you could really recommend in terms of the uh, embedded? Uh, socks that uh, are kind of leading the way? Uh, some that are really good. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I think uh, depending on your use case, like what kind of performance you want, you maybe grab a Raspberry Pi. They have good support. They're cheap. They're available everywhere. They're a pretty decent option, I'd say. Thank you. Sorry, uh, what about RISC-V? RISC-V, how's the interplay going with RISC-V? So this is, uh, we're more GPU focused. I don't know, I don't think. No, I, mean, I mean, the RISC-V infrastructure will begin playing with GPU, right? Things are gonna run on the RISC-V architecture. What, where do you see that roadmap going? So I'm, uh, Mesa is independent of the, the architecture. Um, as long as the kernel supports whatever, um, whatever CPUs happen to be using, that should be fine. Uh, no, it should be fine. So you haven't mentioned anything about virtualization. Yes. Um, a lot of projects I'm looking at have use cases where a lot of people are doing hypervisors or other sort of testing and having, is there anybody with good virtualization support? So uh, currently um, there's a fair amount of work being done to uh, a project called Virgil 3D, which is rather interesting. Uh, it's used um, on the host, um, and the way it works is that uh, the guest runs uh, an open source graphic stack that has a uh, Mesa driver called the Virgil. Uh, the Virgil Mesa driver uh, takes stuff, sends it, sends it through uh, the uh, vert IO uh, paths in the kernel uh, to the host where um, an application called Virgil Render takes that very raw GPU state from the guest and pulls out OpenGL commands out of it and then runs that on whatever driver the, uh, um, the host happens to be running. So you could run uh, a, uh, an open source host with a proprietary NVIDIA driver on, on, the, on the host. Sorry, an open source guest uh, and a proprietary host if you want. Yeah. So that's kind of uh, what, what is currently being worked on. Any more questions? All right, that's it. Thanks. <laughs>